This video is going to be used to show you some of the specific skills that will be helpful for you to know when using Excel in accounting. What we have here is the financial statements for a sample company XYZ, the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. What I want to spend the time on is showing you how to take this income statement, which I've entered the information into Excel for, and show you how we're going to let Excel do some calculations and make the report more readable. We're going to start with the company name, identifying the statement, and the line for the date or time frame. We enter that information into the first cells, 1A, uh, cell A1, A2, and A3, but we want it centered out over the report. To we use the Merge and Center button, so we click in here and then just drag it across let's say over to E and hit merge and center button. We're going to do it for each individual line. It will not do multiple lines and it gives us a nice centered heading. When we look at our numbers we notice that we just typed in the amount but we don't know quickly if that's 200,000 or 20,000. So we're going to highlight all our numbers and add the comma button. Well, by clicking the comma button, we've entered the commas as appropriate, but we've also added pennies. We don't need pennies in our reports. We're going to be working with larger numbers. So we hit the decrease decimal twice. Now we've made these columns a little wider than we need them to, so we're going to go back up in here and double click, double click, and that narrows our columns to uh, whatever width is appropriate for the amounts. Well, actually, we should have done that one step later, and let me show you. We do need a dollar sign at the top of every report, just one. So we're going to go in here, use the button dollar sign, again the pennies are added, decrease the decimal, and decrease the width of the column. Now it's a little bit easier to read, but it's still not great. So we're going to say, hmm, like in math class, whenever we perform math, we usually use an underline. Well, the best underline here is to use the borders button. We need an underline whenever we're going to perform a mathematical computation. So that underline indicates that these amounts are going to be added or subtracted. We need an underline here because we know that expenses are going to be deducted from revenues. And we need one double underline or underscore to say this is the end of the report. So we're going to use a double underline at the bottom of each report and a single underline whenever we're going to perform a mathematical computation. The last thing we're going to do in, in this particular example is enter the formulas. So for formulas we're going to use plus, minus, uh, subtract, rather uh, multiply and divide. That's all we're going to use. And we're going to use it in various formats. So for this one here we want it to be um, I don't want to type in the number, which I did just to show you what it would look like. I want to calculate how much all of these are added up together. So I'm going to use the Auto Sum button. Then I'm going to click here and drag it up and say, I want you to automatically sum those four cells and then hit Enter. And you see here that it did type in the 120 for me. And here, up here in the formula bar, it says we summed cells B9 through B12. Here for net income I'm going to hit the equal sign and I'm going to tell it to take this cell C6 and then subtraction key and this cell C12 and then enter. So it's again going to be a formula that says take whatever amount is in cell C6 and subtract cell C12. That way, should I change any of the amount, amounts, for instance, if this was supposed to be 15,000 instead of 10, I type that in and everything changes. That's the beauty of Excel. I'm going to go back and put in the correct amount. The last thing I want to mention is cell referencing. Cell referencing is used to save you a lot of time and effort. So when we get on to our retained earnings statement, which has already been formatted, you'll notice that September income is added in the retained earnings statement and that number comes from up here. So I could type it in or I could cell reference which says click in here 
hit the equal sign, click in the cell that you want it to put, and hit enter. So this is copied right down here. Should this number change, for instance, if I went back and changed this to 15,000, this would change, this would change, and so would this. And since this is used in this formula, then the, sub, the total of retained earnings at the end of September would also change. That is again one of the beautiful parts of Excel. You can tell I really love Excel, but it is used in the business world extensively. So the more skills you develop using Excel, the better. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to see one more cell referencing down here with retained earnings. Retained earnings comes from this cell. So I entered equals cell, clicked in here, and hit the enter key. So should this change, this would change automatically. Hope this helped.